Lean systems, also called just-in-time systems, are associated with many practices popularized by studies of the Toyota production system. Chief among these practices are a constant push for low or even zero inventories, zero defects, and waste elimination. When we look at the typical sawtooth inventory cycle, we see that if our batch size is Q, our average cycle inventory will be Q divided by 2. Therefore, if we want to reduce the inventory, all we have to do is reduce the batch size. To do that, however, we first need to reduce the reasons for large batches. Applying the principles of the economic order quantity EOQ, we see that if our batch size increases, our average inventory increases, as does the inventory holding cost. However, larger batches mean fewer purchasing orders placed, which reduces the ordering cost. Or, if we are producing something instead of purchasing it, larger batches mean fewer setups, which reduces the setup cost. Our total cost will be minimized if we set our batch size equal to the EOQ. Given the EOQ analysis and the reasons for large batches, how can we justify a push for low inventories? With smaller batches, wouldn't our costs become astronomical? The EOQ model treats the inventory holding cost and setup cost as fixed parameters. Once we know these values, the dependent variable called EOQ can be calculated. Given a particular set of inventory holding cost and setup cost, the EOQ does in fact represent the optimal batch size. Then how does a lean system make sense? The lean system's methodology questions why the inventory holding cost and setup cost should be treated as fixed parameters written in stone. Rather, it focuses on modifying these underlying costs, which then results in a smaller EOQ. An important aspect of lean systems is setup reduction. The Toyota production system aggressively pushes for the reduction of setup time, popularized by terms such as single minute exchange of dies, SMED, or single digit setups that reduce setup times to less than 10 minutes. Consequently, setup costs are reduced considerably. Another important aspect of lean systems is the treatment of inventory as an outright evil. The primary reason for such an attitude is that inventory is a band-aid that covers up many evils. In addition, whereas it is relatively easy to identify the tangible costs of holding inventory, most treatments of inventory holding cost ignore the intangible costs. The tangible costs, however, are often only the tip of the iceberg. An important intangible cost is the loss of customer satisfaction. When we hold inventory, it is often unlikely to be what the customer wants when the customer wants it. Therefore, inventory has a negative impact in terms of both quality and time. Here's a true story. A store I went to had run out of what I wanted, so I asked when the next shipment would come in. An employee told me that it wouldn't be for a while since they already had a lot of stuff in inventory. It didn't matter that it was not the right stuff. Even more important is the loss of customer focus. We are inclined to steer customers towards what we have in inventory, even with deep discounts. Therefore, inventory has a negative impact in terms of cost also. Moreover, existing inventory handicaps us from responding quickly and flexibly to changing customer needs. Therefore, inventory has a negative impact in terms of flexibility as well. Given the extent to which inventory can negatively impact our performance 
in terms of cost, quality, time, as well as flexibility, little wonder that the lean systems philosophy considers inventory an evil. Once we factor in the intangible costs of holding inventory, or the hidden base of the iceberg, we see that the holding cost rises much more sharply than we originally estimated. With these newly calculated setup cost and holding cost values, we can recalculate the EOQ to be a much smaller number than before. Progressively, as we continue with setup reduction, we aim to achieve an ideal batch size of 1. A batch size of 1 is really the hallmark of a highly flexible flow process with high customization and very low volumes. In contrast, lean systems are generally more applicable to settings with much higher volumes. Reducing setup costs allows us to reduce batch sizes even in such settings, allowing even a large volume process to be extremely nimble. Another important intangible cost of inventory is that it covers up process inefficiencies. Such a cover-up runs counter to the lean system's principle of waste elimination. Rather than hide inefficiencies using inventory, the lean system's methodology utilizes inventory reduction as a tool to identify and highlight problems. An often cited analogy equates inventory level to the level of water in a lake. Consider this lake. On the bed of this lake lie several rocks that are not visible from above. The deeper the water in this lake, the safer the boats will be. To remove the rocks, however, we must first reduce the water level to expose the rocks. Inventory serves a similar purpose of insulating us from the rocks in our processes. We are unable to lower the level of inventory, as doing so will expose us to crashing on the rocks. The Lean Systems methodology, however, adopts a waste elimination mindset. We recognize that we are addicted to our inventory because of all our process inefficiencies. We can try to attack our addiction cold turkey and reduce all our inventory at once. That will be a very painful method indeed. Instead, we take a continuous improvement approach. We reduce the level of inventory a little bit and be on the lookout for process issues. When these issues start blowing up in our faces, we eliminate them. Soon, even with this lower level of inventory, we are able to achieve smooth sailing. Now it's time to reduce the inventory yet another notch and look for more opportunities for improvement. As we continue down this path, we can reach a stage when we are able to achieve smooth sailing even with an extremely low level of inventory.